What I wanted to start with today, uh, the remaining time we have today, is to begin sort of diving into some of the basics of fuel cells, some of the language about how people describe fuel cells, and some of the main sort of constraints um, that a fuel cell is operating under. And to sort of ground this, because we want to be able to make estimates of things and talk about like uh, voltages and currents and amounts and kind of get an idea of scale and then have something to focus on for, for design purposes. I kind of want to take the whole class through, you know, my own thinking process about how you would design a fuel cell system for an application. So I picked one. Um, the one that I'm familiar with because my group has been working a little bit with Microsoft on the, on the use of fuel cells in data centers, I've decided to kind of use this as a working example. So what we're going to look at is uh, the use of a fuel cell um, in empowering a data rack uh, in a data center. What would that would take? What kind of voltages and currents would we be talking about? what kind of power fluctuations and that kind of thing. And then how does that impact our design um, and, and thinking about a fuel cell? And, and in the process of that, I will bring up some, some of the fundamentals, which include like the Nernst equation and Faraday's law and stuff like that, which you need to know. Um, okay, so in a typical data center, it kind of looks like this. You have these rows and rows of racks each rack has, is filled with computers and hard drives. They're all drawing power, uh, DC power from some power supply, which is, which is converting from an AC power source. So we're, we're trying to replace that basically. Usually, like if you look at like a typical hard drive or other components that would go into a computer, the, 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 the industry has sort of consolidated to several different types of voltage standards, 12 volt, 15 volt, 24 volt, 48 volts in some cases for higher power devices. So, you know, like if you replace your hard drive in your computer, it'll be on a 12 volt bus, which is feeding off of a common powder power supply. Typically you would have a big power supply. It's the heavy part of the heaviest part of the computer is this power supply that sits in the bottom and produces power for the graphics card or produces power for the hard drives. Um, and so that's typically 12 volts, something like that. Um, and then the whole rack is full of these kinds of parts that are all drawing power. And um, a typical rack might be somewhere for, for one rack of computers is somewhere around uh, 15 to 20 kilowatts which is a lot if you think about a hair dry, hair dryer which is probably the one of the biggest draw power draw devices you would have in your house that's like 1500 watts 1.5 kilowatts so this is something like the on the order of 10 hair dryers or or 20 hair dryers um, and there are racks there are, there are data centers that try to do even more in, uh, intensive up to you know 90 100 kilowatt per rack. But um, I would say 20 is more typical um, today. And so we've got a bunch of devices that are all drawing power at that total amount of about 20 kilowatts and, and at relatively low voltages of like 12 volts. So let's just talk for a moment about like what kind of currents and voltages we would be we would be needing in that type of situation if we were feeding it from a fuel cell, um, and that'll get, also give me an opportunity to just talk about some of the you know uh, electricity and magnetism things with regard to electronics. So um, what we're talking about is a load, and I'm just going to draw this like as a circuit. We've got a high high. Uh, a high voltage bus and a low voltage bus and a load, which I'm just going to represent as a resistor. And um, if we measure the voltage between these, between the high and the low point, this is about 12 volts. Um, a volt It is a joule uh, per coulomb. That's its definition. It's an amount of energy per unit of charge in coulombs. That's its 
that's its, its SI designation. Um, and, uh, you know, we're flowing current through the load at some rate. Um, and that's usually measured in amperes. which is a, a Coulomb per second. So the number of Coulombs of charge per second that's flowing through the wire, basically. Um, and power, the power we're using, if you just throw current through a load and we see a potential drop of 12 volts, the power we're consuming um, is the voltage times the current. And so if we take Coulombs per second, we're multiplying by joules per Coulomb. Um, that's going to give us joules per second. So that's watts. So if I just take, if I take volts, you know, if I take a voltage in volts and multiply by current in amps, and, and I just take those two numbers and multiply them together, I'm going to get power in watts. Um, and so one thing to think about is, well, if we're producing this much total power in the rack, how much total current would we be feeding in to this rack? So let's say we had a fuel cell producing 12 volts of power and we fed it into our rack. How much current would that be? Um, we can figure that out by going backwards. So current would be power divided by voltage. So we're taking our 20,000 uh, joules per second, which is our quick kilo, 20 kilowatts. And then I'm dividing it by 12 volts. A volt, as I said, was a joule per coulomb. Joules cancel. That's going to give us an amps. That is 1670 amps. And I don't know if it depends whether you've dealt with a lot of electronics before or not, whether that number seems big to you, but it's actually the very large number. So, you know, like if you're talking about your computer at home, you plug it into the wall and it's drawing power, we're talking about, you know, fractions of an ampere or something like that. Typical 120 volt cord you plug into the wall is rated, you know, for 15 amps. That would be your typical standard plug. Is got a, few, you know, like there's a circuit breaker in your in your apartment somewhere that's a, that will blow it if you exceed 15 amps. Um, so 1670 amps. That's a lot of current to be flowing. And just to give you an idea, if if you look up ASTM standards for like what type of wiring you would need to carry that amount of current, um, you know, like 300 amp current. It needs um, about a half inch diameter wire. So <laughs> we're talking about like, you know, it's almost like a solid chunk of, I mean, if you're using a solid conductor, that's like, you know, a massive wire to be able to carry that amount of current without having big potential losses or you know, heating of the wire, you know, things that would call, create a safety issue. Um, so this is the, like one of the first problems that, I mean, data centers are dealing with right now is like, how do you deal with just massive amounts of electrical power that are traveling and that are DC power at relatively low voltages? Low voltages are actually really, really hard to handle <laughs> because because to get the power you need, you have to have you have you have small voltages, big currents. That combination is not very desirable um, from an electrical engineering standpoint. So typically, um, what what a lot of data centers are moving toward are much higher voltage standards in order to be able to just move the electricity around the data center in a reasonable way and not have massive losses and just super expensive wiring setups. You need to be able to carry current. At a much lower rate, um, 
and so one of the one of the things that's happening right now, people are trying to come up with new standard, new DC power standards. One of them is 380 volts. Um, and so that is one one of the tar, you know, that's one of the ways that fuel cell developers are kind of approaching this now as well. We would we we also would like to be able to deal with power with which with, which with uh, much smaller currents, and so at 380 volts we can start thinking about you know how would that be? So if we take current in that situation, if I if I were producing and transmitting DC power at 380 volts, take our 20,000 joules per second, and this time 380 joules per coulomb. This is more like 50 amps. And that's starting to get into the realm of, you know, reasonableness. Um, and so that's, that, that's typically what we would be trying to target. Like we'd have a fuel cell system, uh, as we'll talk about in a, in a bit, that means usually not one cell. We're not going to use one cell. We're going to use a cell just like, you know, when you're in electronic devices, typically you don't have one AAA battery. It's like, you have two of them on top of each other or four of them in series to produce enough voltage to drive electronics. It's kind of the same idea. You would have fuel cells, but there'd be a whole stack of them. That's what a stack refers to is this stacking of electric, put, putting fuel cells electrically in series in order to be able to add up the voltage. So, you, you know, you have one volt, you have a cell operating at one volt, you had another cell that's operating at a volt and another cell operating at one volt. The volts are additive as you, as you stack them up. Um, and so that's what we'd be looking at is some stack of cells that would be enough to bring the voltage up to 380 volts and thus be compatible with the electronics control systems that are, would be in our data center. Um, another consideration is how much does that power level fluctuate or what type of use cycles are you typically going to need to satisfy in your application? And in a data center, um, I turn to a colleague at Microsoft who knows a lot about this stuff, a guy named D. Wang, who studies these issues. And what he has explained to me is that servers don't operate just continuously. They tend to have a lot of fluctuation and there are several different kind of varieties of fluctuation. The first is sort of um, this constant, very short-term fluctuations. So this is just due to the nature of computers. They're just, they're just have bursts of activity where you're using electricity and then suddenly turning off, using bursts of electricity and turning off. And, and, since, and to some degree, that's buffered by the fact that you have tons and tons of devices all in a rack, and some of them are drawing at different times, and so they tend to add together and give you some softening. However, that still means there's going to be there's short-term noise. If you just look at the power level consumed by a rack, it's going up and down. And these short-term fluctuations, um, and by short-term, I mean less than 10 seconds. would be plus or minus 5% usually. So this just represents the kind of the, the natural fluctuations you have in electronic componentry over time. And so, and that, and our system has to be able to handle that for sure. And it probably needs to be able to handle that without any kind of control. So it, you can't rely on the fuel cell to, oh, you need a little bit more power now. I will ramp up and produce more power. And no, you need a little bit less power. I will ramp down. That's fine if you're talking about half an hour time scale or an hour time scale. But if it's, if it's less than 10 seconds, usually a fuel cell can't respond that quickly. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why that is. So our, we have to design our thing with some robustness here. It has to be able to handle these loads in a sort of passive way uh, at plus or minus 5%. And we'll talk about some of the implications of that. Um, 
The other thing is uh, we have longer term fluctuations. And you know what this looks like if I look at rack power versus time, you'll see you know things going up and down, bursts of activity, and just, you know it kind of looks like this. Just kind of sketching it. And if we have we call this you know 100% power, it might drop to as low as maybe 70%. Um, you know, so we're talking about a fairly wide window of activity of ramping up and down, um, at, just due to just on all time scales, so longer time scales. And and so this part, this these 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 intermittent decreases in power requirement need to be handleable uh, with our control system. Our fuel cell has to be operable. Um, at lower powers. And there are different strategies for how we might be able to do that, um, which we'll talk about. 